Hello everyone, this is Razor Game Dev, and welcome back to the 10th episode on Let's Make a Platformer in Love 2D. So kicking things off, I'm going to take you to the, uh, yeah, the Tile Map Manager. So, we, uh, in the last episode, I, I made a really big mistake. Um, actually, several really big mistakes. I didn't account for the, how many layers that were in the map. So I was just rendering one layer and overriding the data, just combining all the layers into one. That's why, when you, um, when we rendered it, um... Yeah, this part right here was cut off, was because of that. Um, but I fixed that, and I had a video on me fixing it, but it was just, my recorder has been freaking out, and it hasn't been working, so I was using some makeshift recording. It's just awful, so I thought it would be better for me just to um, take this, and I have a paste bin where I, I just pasted the code in at that place. So I'll leave a link in the description. Um, if you just want to copy right here, I'll just give you a full... I like tour of the code but anyway yeah there we go so yeah that's the top map loader so today we're gonna be working on the player so we're gonna have a little player here um, and also probably uh, fix the camera up at least make it work so we can uh, get the player around anyway so we already have a player module right here so it's just yeah getting started to fleshing this out so let's create a function let's create a load function player or actually let's create a new player so let's say local player undercase is equal to a table and then down here let's return that table there we go so we create a new object let's say function player colon load and we want to render it and draw it and I can't remember let me check okay so I call it tick and draw there we go it's been a while since my last video it's been recording um, troubles and also uh, whoop and also dealing with life. I have school starting up and uh, yeah, I'm gonna draw. There we go. So we have to add these to the game loop. Um, let me check. Do I have a. Okay, that's it. Okay, I see. So I'm just gonna say game loop add loop. And I'm gonna say player. Or actually self. And then we wanna add it to the render. So render um, colon add render self that's always so hard to say okay so there we go and we're just going to draw a square at the player's position oh actually right here I'm going to say okay let's require let's just do it right here require um, objects we want to actually make this a entity so we don't have to code a whole bunch of stuff that's why we built this class so here's the uh, the values that we have to pass in um, so X, I'm just going to put it at the 64, put Y 64 width, I'm going to make it 32 by 32, um, image, I'm just going to say nil, whoop, and same with quad. As for ID, I'm going to say player, and we actually don't implement the ID, so in the entity, let's implement the ID. So let's say entity dot ID is equal to ID, or let's make it equal to entity, just in case we don't, we forget to pass in um, ID or something, I don't know. So we don't get a null ID. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's draw a rectangle at the player. So let's say love.graphics dot uh, rectangle. Um, I'm just gonna make it, I'm gonna fill it. File. Fill it. I'm gonna say, uh, let me check. I had vectors, right? Self dot, oh, I guess I don't have a pose. Man, I forgot a lot of stuff. So let's make self.position is equal to vector2, new. I'm going to say x, comma, y. And also I'm going to make a size vector. Size is going to be our width and our height. So new, width, comma, height. Um, and these, if I remember correctly, let's go to the vector2 cl vec class. Yeah, they handle null exceptions or whatever. So if you pass in a null value, you know, whatever. Um, let's say self dot position dot x and self dot position dot y self dot size dot x self dot size dot y there we go so in our level we should do we have a level oh man i made the game state manager all right all right we'll work on that later um oh wait we do hold up of course we do i'm really confused right now i don't see the level anywhere Got it. 
Alright, alright, I see. Oh, I get it. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so I'm just gonna say, um, OBM add require the player. Say objects. Sorry, that took me a little while. Yeah, we need to make a uh, game state manager where we manage the um, all the state turn game like levels and all that. Maybe in the next tutorial. So 64, 64. Um, is that all? Just the position. Yep. Okay. Say. Oh, whoops. Let me fix this here. Colon new. Pass that in. All right, there we go. So right, right here. Let's just put the x and the y so we can position it over here. So let's say 128. Um, and yeah, so let's rerun this. We should be able to see. Yep, there it is. Now the player's giant, so I'm gonna actually make him eight by eight. Because I think that's what we made the tile size, if I remember correctly. Um, let's see. No, we made the tile size 16 by 16. That's a good size. Whoops. Well, sorry, I just launched the game as if it was a Chrome SDK app. There we go. Oh, I just did it again. I'm so used to it. I've been working on working on a project. Anyway, there's the player. Very nice. So um hmm trying to think of what to do next so let's get the camera moving so in the camera class let's let's add some stuff let's make a function uh, camera dot go to point let's make it a vec2 or let's just say position it'll be a vec2 though um, self dot position dot x is equal to position dot x self dot position dot y let's go to position dot y so we're just going to do this for right now now this is kind of broken at the moment or not broken but you'll see what happened so let me see where, where we, we got the camera right let me include the camera wait oh, all right add you never mind it's a global there we go okay so um because it's global we need to require it right here so let's say require camera utils or tools I should say camera um in here let's say camera go to point self dot position self dot pose all right there we go so we play on um, the camera's right at the corner there so what we want to do is we want to count for the uh, width of our screen we want to subtract half width of the screen so what we're going to do is we're going to go here and I think that the uh, size no 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 never mind so let's say let's create a local a couple local variables local wait hold up I think we uh do we have that in the main we do not so we're just gonna create global variables you should always try to avoid global variables but with the game with I mean if you know what you're doing you don't have to worry about that fix dot get width height equal to love dot graphics dot get height there we go. Um, so, okay, so what we want to do is we want to go over here and we want to subtract uh, width divided by 2. So subtract height divided by 2. So if we play this now, not as a Chrome SDK app, but a Love to D app, we're nearly in the middle. There's a little offset, but I'll worry about that later. Um, okay, there we go. So. Next for the player is to start, well, let's just move left and right. So I'm going to uh, I'm gonna say love. Actually, I'm going to create a local variable because when we call anything that we call every frame we should, um, that's global, we should create a local for it. I haven't really been doing that, but I don't know. So love.key, or let's say key is equal to love.keyboard. Oh, my word. Um, dot is down. Let's just make this make it equal to that. So let's say if key we're gonna pass in left then and then if key pass in right then there we go. Um, and this should not be capital. So let's end this. We also want to move the player. So if we go into our entity, you can see we have a velocity right here. So we want to move the player um, every frame. 
Uh, and also, do we have a direction? If not, we need to have We do have a direction. All right, good. So every frame, we want to move the player according to its velocity times its direction. So if its direction is negative, go negative 1, then I'll make the velocity negative, so I'll move a negative direction like left. If the velocity is positive 1, it'll keep the, um, the value uh, positive, and I'll move it towards the right. So what we're going to say is self.position, self.pose is um, dot x is equal to self dot pose dot x um, plus self dot vel dot x times self dot dire dot x and right here this velocity I want to multiply it by a delta time just like that so here I'm gonna select all this and duplicate it uh, can I do that no I cannot there's a way to do it I just yeah um, here I'm going to select all the x's and change it to y. All right, there we go. So no, nothing should happen because we haven't. Um, let me see keyboard. My word. There we go. Um, right here we're going to say self dot val dot x is equal to, or let's say self dot up here self dot val dot x is equal to 200. Then here, self dot dire dot x is equal to negative one. Self dot dire dot x is equal to one. We might change out how we do this, but we'll leave it like this for now. So there we go. So now we can move left and right, and that's kind of jarring. But that's really the camera that's doing that. Um, and we'll fix that in, in the future. So, do do do. Let me think. Okay, so instead of doing it like this, actually, well, actually, we'll leave it the same, but we'll actually make the uh, value x right here um, equal to 200. Just whoops, self dot val dot x is equal to 200. So we want to smooth out the player's movement. So if we see right here, it's very like I click left and he moves left, and there's no slowdown. And as soon as I release, he stops. So what we want to do is use that friction variable. Do we have a friction variable? We do not. So let's create one entity. Whoop. And I'm putting this in the entity because I'm pretty sure every uh, every object that we want to have will use this. So I'm just going to put it at 0.9. Actually, no, no, no. I'm not going to do it like that. Let me go back to the entity, remove that. We're going to do it a different way. So what we're going to say is we're going to say self dot vel dot x is equal to self dot vel dot x times we want to say uh, 1 minus dt times 4 so what we're doing here is we're, we're, we're taking the velocity right we're multiplying it by 1 minus delta time so delta times like I said is the frame it t how long it takes to um, loop through every single frame and render and all that so the time between frames basically um, so we're subtracting that small number from 1 and then multiplying by the velocity of x, which means it'll slowly decrease the velocity. We're multiplying it by 4 just so it's uh, a little bit faster, and that's a variable that we can change. Um, doesn't look like it's doing much. Let me just try one. Uh, man, I keep doing that. Do that again. Hmm, maybe I... Okay, let me try 0.9 and see if that works. Strange. Oh, I get it. Okay, okay. Make sure you're not resetting the velocity. Am I? I'm not. Am I? Let me look at this. Self of L dot x is equal to self of the velocity dot x. Let's remove that. Oh my word. All right, let's try that. There we go. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So let's actually just get, no, no, we want to leave that. So yeah, so let me try that one minus delta time thing again. Oh my word. There we go. Okay, so yeah, very smooth. As you can see, as soon as we let go, it slows down. So we can increase this number to increase how fast it um, it decelerates. So that's that feels pretty good. Actually, on a uh, larger scale, that would not be good. So let's do something like 12. Okay, that's, that's feeling about right. So I want to zoom the camera in. So to deal with the camera, we're, we have to uh, we have to take this width and height and multiply it by its zoom. So times self dot 
scale.x. And this took me a while to figure out, so this might not work, but we'll see. Um, self.scale.x or .y. So we play that, it should just be normal. Now if we zoom in a bit, camera.scale.x is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1.5. .5. Camera.scale.y is equal to 1.5. If I play this, yeah, I guess one, oh no, I guess I do need 0.5, huh? Um, this doesn't look like it's working though. Ah, uh, shoot, my word. There we go, build. Okay, I see, I see. So yeah, we can we can zoom in, but it's not it's not tracking the player correctly. So um, I'll mess with this and I'll come back with the solution next episode. Yeah, it's better than that. Ooh, let's see. Yeah, I'll come back with the solution next episode because I remember it was, uh, it was a little bit complicated. Anyway, um, yeah, so we got basic player movement. Let's zoom the camera back out just so we can see what the heck's going on. So yeah, I'm going to call that an episode. Uh, next, we'll actually add gravity and do a little bit of collision checking, I believe. Um, and also fix the camera. But for now, this is what we got. Um, next few episodes are going to be kind of tough because collision for platformers is... It's not hard. It's all... I mean, unless we want to add slopes, all rectangle collisions and all that. It's just uh, what to do when you when you actually do collide. You know, you have to... You have, you have to push the player... Like, let's say he falls and he goes down through the tile because it's not... I mean... Every frame, there's a little bit of chance for error. So he goes through the tile. That means you have to snap him to the top of the tile. If he goes to the left, you have to snap him to the uh, left or to the right of the tile. If he goes to the right, you have to snap him to the left of the tile. But it's all it's all pretty, yeah. It's a, it's a little bit challenging. So the next few episodes should be kind of complicated, but good. Um. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, be sure to leave a like and all that. Also, um, announcement. I should uh, come out with a video announcing my Android game that I just released. Um, that's the main project I've been working on for a little bit, only only for like a couple weeks. But uh, yeah, so be sure to check that out, um, download it. That'd be really cool, really help out the channel. And yeah, thanks for watching. Um, see you in the next vid.